Welcome to more with the Mac Interactive Session. We're gonna have some short demos. We're gonna have some Q and A. We even gonna have some special guests stop by. So sit back, relax, get your notes, and ask questions, and enjoy more with the Mac Interactive. Welcome to More with the Mac Interactive. Today we're going to do tip bit quick hits. I'm just going to remind you of a few things and then we'll go into what I'm going to show you today. Um, I've been getting emails about things that we've already covered, so I'm just going to point out a quick few reminders. If you want to go to the voiceover quick start or see your keystrokes, you want to go into the voiceover help menu. And you do that from the, de the finder by hitting VOH. Voiceover help menu, five items. All right, we got five items in here. Let's explore what they are. Before, I just took you directly to the quick getting started quick tutorial, but let's see what other items are in here. User guide control option, question mark. The user guide. Now, that is the voiceover user guide. Um, it will give you different categories. Um, as a matter of fact, let's just go in there. Opening voiceover user application toolbar. Voiceover user guide. Vertical splitter. Web content. All right. This is web content, so I'm going to have to interact. Voiceover, shift, down arrow. In web content, voiceover user guide. So I'm assuming this is the table of contents. Let's take a look. Table of contents. Yep. The voiceover utility voices pane showing voice settings for English, French, and Japanese work the way you like. If you use voiceover, the screen reader built into a Mac OS, you can customize it using voiceover utility. Alright, we don't have time for him to be reading everything. So let me go back up here and click on the table of contents so you can see what kind of things are in this is in this user guide. Voiceover user guide. Table of contents. Alright, I just VO space bar, so let's go to the through these table of contents categories and see what's in here. The voiceover utility work the way you like. If you use voiceover, how to use voiceover utility, how to use voiceover gestures, how to browse web pages, how to use voiceover with braille displays, Apple accessibility support website, last link. App All right, so I'll just give you a quick tip because there was a lot of stuff in between those categories. I did VO, command, and the letter L, which will take you to a link. Um, on a web page, it's pretty much the same thing unless you got quick nav and single letter navigation on. But yeah, so you heard the categories. I'm going to go back up here to the top. Voiceover user guide. And again, I did that with voiceover, the function key or FN key, whatever you choose to call it, and the left arrow. And that took me back to the top. Table of contents. The voiceover utility for... How to use voiceover, a list of voiceover gestures and corresponding commands shown in the trackpad commander and voiceover utility. Okay, so if you do that command, voiceover, keys, or the modifier of your choice with command in the L, it will take you to the next link and then right after it. How to use voiceover gestures. Alright, how to use voiceover gestures. So I'll be a right arrow and give me a brief description of what that chapter is about. A Safari web page in the voiceover cursor and the voiceover rotor set to headings. Image. Again, this is something that you can explore on your own. I just wanted to give you an idea where to find these things if you wanted to go a little deeper into what you've already learned. Finder. Desktop. So I hit escape and took me back to the finder. So let's go back to the voiceover help menu. Voiceover help menu. Five items. User guide control option, question mark. Commands help, menu control option, HH. So, he just told you if you wanted to get to the commands help menu, you do voice over HH twice. Keyboard help control option, K. Control option K, that's um, basically the keyboard help where if you push that, it will um, let you press any key and it will tell you what it does. Sounds help menu. I've showed you this before. Basically, this shows you the sounds, what each uh, sound, what each command sound is going to be, whether it's a fail sound, launching an app, whatever the case may be. Quick start tutorial control option F and command 8. And there's the quick start tutorial. So, desktop. Let's do VOHH like he said, because there's a few things in there that you might want to look at. Commands help menu, 15 items. Alright, this is the commands help menu. General menu. Now, 
If I VO right arrow, it's going to give me a list of the commands. General menu, 80 items. There's 80 items under general. Actions, control, option, command, space. Add pronunciation. Bring window to front, control, option, FN. Click mouse, control, option, shift, space. Bring, click mouse, control, option, shift, space. Close window, control, option, command, escape. Describe position of item in voiceover cursor. Control okay. option, commands, help menu. The one I want you to look at, though, is... General menu, 80 item, actions, control, option, command, space. Option, uh, basically, voiceover keys, command, and the space. That's like if you get a pop-up, you can dismiss it quickly with that command. So you would hit the VO keys with the command key, press the space bar, and it'll give you actions. Dismiss, close all whatever the case may be view the event of its calendar whatever so let's go Commands to help menu on general let's menu. go to the next category information menu information information menu nine items describe item in mouse pointer control option fn5 describe item in voiceover cursor control option fn3 describe item with keyboard focus control option fn4 Okay, so you get the idea. Commands help menu on information so menu. That's the commands help menu. Those are commands I never use, so I really can't help you out with those. Again, the Mac is something that will help you learn it the more you explore it. And just to remind you that 10 years ago, actually almost 11 years ago now, when I first got my Mac, I didn't have the training that you guys are getting. So you must delve into the recordings pause, play it, you know, practice it, look at the notes. There are great written commands and tutorials in that folder for you to look at to help you to get to know your Mac better. Again, it's not an overnight process. All right, let's see what this, the next category is. Navigation menu. Navigation. Navigation menu, 47 items. We got 47 items in here. I'll show you the first few. Go down one page, control option, page down. Go left a bit, control option, shift, left arrow. Go left one page, control option, shift, page up. Go right a bit, control option, shift, right arrow. And depending on how you have your keyboard set, you may have to add the function key with these arrows. Again, explore this on your own. Commands help text menu. And now text is the next category. Text menu, 27 items. Read current character, control option, C. Read current character, phonetically, control option, C, C. Read current line, control option, L. Read current paragraph control option P. Read current sentence control option S. And you can see he's saying control option, but in uh, simple terms, those are the voiceover keys. So you can use that or the caps lock key, whichever your choice is. Commands help menu, web menu. All right, this is the web. I'm not going to go into that yet because we really haven't touched on Safari. Find menu. Find. Uh, I guess we can look at a couple Find of these. Menu. 81 item. Find control option F. Find the next auto web spot control option command. Find next block quote control option command Q. So you get the idea. Commands tables menu. Tables menu eight items. Jump to header control option vertical line. Move to parent row control option command backslash. So the bottom line is commands help menu on table. This voiceover HH menu brings you into the command. So if you ever want to learn your commands, write a few of your favorites down. You can do it in here. You also have size and position, audio menu, real menu, visuals, speech menu, hotspots, menu, keyboard commander menu. Keyboard commander. Now this is where all your commands are going to be that you create your custom commanders. Now the ones you hear in here are not going to be the ones you hear on your system because I've made a, cust a few of mine up so. Keyboard commander menu decrease volume right option exclamation mark open application voice toggle screen curtain on or off right option period mute speech toggle right option slash go to beginning right option one. See so this is this, these are my commands um again I'm not going to go through a whole lot of them because desktop those are my custom ones but since we are already talking about commanders I guess I'll show you how to create one so you'll go to voiceover utility as you know I have a commander for it however you choose to get to it is up to you you can do command shift U hit the letter V to go over voiceover utility voiceover spacebar or you can do the a voiceover keys with F8 add the function key if you need to and that'll take you there so let's launch the command uh, the voiceover utilities voiceover utility voiceover utility window utility categories general selected right. has keyboard focus I'm already on general 
So I'm just gonna hit C for commanders. Commanders. And then I'm VO right arrow. Numpad. Selected. Tab. One of three. I don't even have a numpad. Keyboard. Tab. Two of three. That's the one I want. Keyboard. So I'm tab. Gonna keyboard. Select that. Quick nav. Tab. Three of three. Quick nav is also a commander. We'll talk about that later. Checked. Enable keyboard commander. Checkbox. All right. That is the checkbox that has to be checked in order for you to use um, commander. And I think it unchecks itself when you turn keyboard commander off. Let's see. Uncheck. Yep, it does. So that's that's the toggle for um, not having to come in here and check that box. You can just VO shift K and it'll checked. check that box for you whether you're in here or not. I'm in here so that's why it's telling me it's checked. There's a discrepancy that some people think that you have to have the Apple script chat box under the general tab checked. That's not necessarily true because mine's not checked and my commanders still work. I think that's for scripts that are written for like I think it does have to be checked in order for the time to work because that's an Apple script. I used to have one that told me the battery level but I no longer use a laptop or um, a MacBook Pro or Air so that's irrelevant. I use a desktop that's always plugged in. That's neither here nor there. So let's go over here so I can show you how to create a commander. Use. And this is an option where you can use right option key use. And this Pop is important button. because I had a student who was using her left option key and it wasn't reading the time, but her right option key was selected. You can have it select both. It tells you that the option key will behave differently. I've heard mixed reviews on this. Some say it works the same and there's no change. Some say that it doesn't. So I keep mine on the right option key. Keyboard commander. All right. These are a list of my commanders. I'm not even going to go into this table. I'm just going to show you how to create one. Now, I do everything with my right option key. So I try to keep everything on the left. And one thing you can keep in, to keep in mind is it, it, you can actually use the shift key also. So you can have an A and a capital A, a S and a capital S. For instance, my regular S, my lowercase S, is Safari. My um, uppercase S or my shift S is my system preferences. That's what I open it for me. Um, my option Q will open text edit. My my capital Q will open pages. So you can have a lot of different options and you can even use you know the keys that are on your right hand if you can reach them or if you choose to cross up that's up to you. I don't choose to do it. I have very few on the right. Most of my commanders are on my left because I use my right option key and I use my left hand to push the keys. So let's go create a commander. Add button. All right, we got to hit the add button. But one thing I do want to show you. Keyboard commander. Now, this is actually a table, but he didn't read it because I think I have my table set to low. I meant to change that. But this is actually a table. So I, if I wanted to know what my can commanders were, I would interact here. In keyboard key, exclamation mark. Exclamation point is. Command decrease volume menu button. It decreases my volume. I'll just go down here a few of them. Open application. Voice over utility menu button. And that's my... What is that? Keyboard key number. No, it's my number sign. Okay. And toggle screen curtain on or off menu button. So, as you can see, I got a few of them in here. Keyboard key, period. So, why does it say period? That's supposed to be a slash. Command open up keyboard key, period, number, period. I don't know why he said, you know what, hold on. It is a period. <laughs> it goes to show how much I know. Anyway, all right, let's create a command. Add button. So, we're going to hit the add button. Edit text blank. All right, you heard him say edit text blank. This is where you want to type the key that you want to use for whatever you're going to select the commander for. And I think all my left-handed commanders are taken. Actually, I don't think my shift, my capital T is. So let's do capital T. T. Now, you heard him say the letter, and I'm going to go VO right arrow. Command menu button. Command menu button. Menu. I already know what I'm going to select this commander as, but I'm going to go through these categories so you can see what you can set commanders as. So you got general, you got general, information, information, navigation, navigation. Let's see what's the navigation because somebody asked me how I set my keys to go to the top and the bottom. So I'll show you, but I'm not going to set that commander because it's already set. Navigation, go down one page, go left a bit, go left one page, go right a bit, go right one page, go to beginning. Go to bottom of window. Go to beginning. Go to bottom of go to desktop. Go to dock. Go to end. Go to linked item. Go to menu bar. 
Go to pop-up item. Go to status menus. Go to top of window. All right. Go to top of window. That's what my my uh commander is. Is option one, and it's set to go to the top. And like I said, that's what I use. So I just wanted to show you a few things in here. There's another one here. Go to go to pop up. Go to menu bar. Go to linked item. Go to linked item. That's a little misleading, or maybe people have taught it the wrong way. Basically, what that is is that's V O J. Because if you turn on keyboard help and you push V O and the letters J, that's exactly what it's gonna say. Go to linked item. People use it as a jump command because it jumps from table to table or section to section but that's the proper phrase for it go to linked item so menu navigation so the other categories are text web find tables size and position audio radio visuals speech hotspots custom command custom commands and custom commands is actually the one you want because you want to open an application custom commands open application ellipsis and open application is right there at the top open utility ellipsis Open file ellipsis. Run Apple script script ellipsis. Run automator workflow ellipsis. Run shortcut ellipsis. Run shortcut ellipsis. All right, and run shortcut is the about the, the, the last one. So let's go back up here to open application. Run, run, open, open, open application ellipsis. So I'm on VO space bar on that or enter, whichever you choose. Menu button. Cancel button list view. All right, and I'm, I use list view, and I already know what I want the commander to be, so. Or what application I want to open, so I'm going to interact with this table. In list view, name, name, size, kind. Now I'm going to hit the letter K. Infuse application. Keynote application. And Keynote is what I want because I've been using that lately to upload um, this class audio to YouTube. And I'm going to hit enter. T. Insertion at end of text. And it, brought, text. and it brought me right back to what I selected as my commander to let me know that it was done. So I'm going to VO right arrow. And alert. OK. Default button. The T key is already being used. OK. Default so button. It let me know that the T key is already being used. So keyboard commander. Row 5 of 44. Keyboard key. Slash. Command so, mute speech toggle. So basically he's telling me that I can't use that. What is my, let me see. Right option key. Keyboard commander. Let's see. In commando. Keyboard key. Slash. One, two, three, four. Add. Four, three, two, one. Command go to beginning. Menu button. Yep, that's my go to beginning. Keyboard two, three, four. Add. A, C, D, E, F, G, A, Q, R, S, T, W, T. All right, let's see what my capital T is. Command open application. Google Chrome. Menu button. I don't even use that app. Let's delete this one. So, if you don't want a commander, I don't even have Google Chrome installed on here, as a matter of fact. I must just import it with my preferences. So, if you want to delete a commander, you make sure you just highlight it. Open, applica open application. Google Chrome. Menu All right, button. Google Chrome is that one, so I'm going to add button. I stopped interacting with the table with VO shift up arrow. Remove button. And there's the remove button. An alert. Cancel button. Are you sure you want to delete the command for the T key? Delete. Default button. And I'm sure, so I'm going to hit delete. Remove button. And that's basically how you create a commander. And I guess I just showed you how to remove one. So, I'm going to close out um, voiceover utilities. Finder. Desktop. Um, let's go over a couple more things I think was covered in the first couple classes. But I want to remind you that you can do VO and the letter O for your notification center. Notification center. Window. Scroll area. And scroll area. Three right. items. Notifications. All right. You heard him say scroll area. And for whatever reason. Oh, yeah. That's right. Because my hint doesn't talk unless I'm here for 10 seconds. I don't want to wait 10 seconds. So I'm going to do the, the hint um, action so you can know what I'm supposed to do here. You are currently on a list. All right, he says, I'm currently on a list. Let's see if there's a help tag. This item has no help tag. All right. Well, I know that I'm supposed to interact here, so let's do VO shift down arrow. In notifications, Mac rumors stacked 20 minutes ago. Yellow five-pointed star. New story, yellow five-pointed star. Deals. Take $50 off the Apple Watch Series 7, starting at 300 That's a nice deal. Anyway, so that was my first notification. Screen time stacked. 36 minutes ago. Got one of my kids asking for more time on the screen time during school. Not going to happen. 
so that's the last notification so let's go back over to actually we can do it here this is where the actions menu that I was re, um, referring to before comes into play so I'm gonna do VO command spacebar actions menu six items six items where are my options clear all approve for 15 minutes approve for an hour approve all day don't approve press press so I'm gonna don't go up here to approve for approve clear all clear all clear all Mac rumors stacked and then it takes me to my other notification window Finder. I mean that's desktop. pretty self-explanatory so VO and the letter O it'll take you to your inner notification center as well as your widgets I don't use widgets so I mean if that's something you want to explore you can usually you can add and remove stuff there calendar clock weather I think you can even put your stocks there um, a couple OS's ago I think before Catalina so it might have been Mojave they used to have Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn where you could post directly from there, but for whatever reason, they took that away. So I'm not even going to talk about it because I was kind of mad about that. Okay, the other one is VO Shift O. Desktop. And why isn't it working? Application. There we go. Control Center System Dialog. This All right. You heard sound. him say. You heard him say control center, and that's exactly what it is. Just like on your phone, if you would touch the top of your screen and um, and pull down with one finger on one side, or do it the old traditional way of swiping down with three fingers, this is that. This is what that is on your Mac. Um, I know there's a trackpad gesture for it. I don't know it. Maybe Trainer Mac can tell you about it. But this is where you would find your control center. And let's see what's in here. Microphone, image, audio hijack. Video effects toggle button. Mic mode toggle button. So it has my mic mode. Selected Wi-Fi toggle button. Selected Shari toggle button. Selected Bluetooth toggle button. And on any of these op on any of these uh selections I can do the VO command spacebar, which is the actions menu. Selected Shari toggle button. That's a do not disturb thing that's on right now. And let's see if I VO command spacebar. Actions menu two items. Show details. Press. I can show details or press it, and I'm not going to do neither because I don't need to show. I, I, it's basically a um, a focus that turns everything off. Selected Bluetooth toggle button. Bluetooth is selected, of course, because I'm using it. Selected AirDrop toggle button. AirDrop is always selected. Screen mirroring toggle button. Screen mirroring. Display. 45% display brightness. Connect to sidecar toggle button. Sound. 25% AirPlay audio toggle button. Image. Music, play button, next, dimmed button, next, dimmed button. So you see I have my play pause controls here in my control center. But yes, this is, like I said, pretty self-explanatory. When you get to an option or uh, a setting that you want to look at, you do VO command space bar. And you want to go to details, not press, because if you press it, if it's, especially if it's Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, and you're using a Bluetooth headset, pressing it will, or selecting the press option will turn it off. So, you don't want to do that. <laughs> you want to go to details. So, I mean, that's, like I said, that's pretty self-explanatory. Finder, desktop. So, I hit the escape key to get out of it. Let's go to system preferences. System preferences. As you know, I have a commander for it. Get to it the best way you know how. Preference panes. So I'm going to interact with the preference panes. In desktop and screen saver. And I want to show you how to customize a few of your notifications. So let's hit NO for notifications. No notifications and focus button. Not notifications and focus. Loading notification. Focus is just like on your phone. You can set up a focus, and if you have a check, the checkbox on your phone and on here, you can sync it across devices. So I'm not going to go into that today. I mean, it's, it's pretty straightforward you name it or select a custom one pick the apps and the people you want to be able to get through if you want it to be shown in your apps when you're when you have it turned on pick the time of day or automation and you're pretty much good I mean that's how it goes so let's go to notifications notifications and focus notifications selected tab one of two alright my notifications tab is already selected focus tab I don't two. want focus. Notification center shows your alerts in the upper right of your screen without interrupting what you're doing. Show and hide notification center by clicking the clock in the menu bar. All right. He gave you the instructions. But I'm going to go over here to this. It's not going to say table, but that's what it is. Applications. All right. 9 to 5 Mac. Sounds. Banners. Selected. All right. He told me what my first app was. 
and what kind of a notification was. That one's already customized, so. In applications. I'm going to interact with the table, and let's go to messages, because I think that one's messed up. Messages, badges, sounds, banners. All right, we're going to stop interacting. Out of applications. Allow notifications. All right, allow notifications. Allow notifications. Messages alert style. This is the style of alert that it will give me. None. Radio button. One of three. None, which, which means it'll completely turn it off. Banners. Selected. Radio button. Two of three. Banner, which... I guess is a good thing. I, I usually turn mine off, because I just have the sound playing in the background, so I don't need it. So, I'll leave it like that for now. Alerts. Radio button. Three of three. Now, alerts is... It, it it's not gonna go away until you dismiss it so banners appear in the upper right corner and go away automatically alert stay on screen until dismissed all right and then we have other choices in here unchecked allow time sensitive alerts checkbox I have mine unchecked because if I have a do not disturb one I don't want the messages to notify me anyway unchecked show notifications on lock screen checkbox I don't ever lock my screen so that's irrelevant Unchecked. Show in Notification Center. Checkbox. Now, I get a lot of messages, and I don't want to go through them in my Notification Center. That's why I have that unchecked. I don't need to see them in Notifications. If I hear the sound go off or the banner pops up, then I know to go look at it if it's a person that I want to talk to at that present time. Otherwise, I'll look at it later. Checked. Badge app icon. Checkbox. The badge icon, which basically means if you have the messages um, app in your dock, if you go past it, it'll tell me it will tell you how many unread messages you have. Checked. Play sound for notifications. Checkbox. Definitely you play sound for notifications there. I have that checked. Show previews. Show previews, which I don't want to see. When unlocked, default. It says when unlocked preview. And I I'm almost positive that that's just the banner. I've never really dealt dug into it to see. Notification grouping. Automatic. When to show message preview pop-up button all right that's pretty self-explanatory show previews when unlocked when to show message preview pop all right up button it, that virtually is repeating itself and I guess that's a setting that you can toggle differently I've always left it alone so don't quote me on it allow notifications unchecked when the display is sleeping checkbox Unchecked when the screen is locked. Check button. Unchecked when mirroring or sharing the display. Help button. All right, those are things that I never use. So they when when screen is locked, when screen a uh, sharing and something else. I've unchecked when mirroring or sharing the display. Check yeah, box. when mirroring or sharing display. So that's basically, I mean, how how you no, n um customize your notifications. Toolbar. So the toolbar. Notifications and focus. It tells you what category it is. Notifications. Selected. Make tab. sure your notifications two. tab is selected. Fo Notification center shows your alerts in the up applications. Messages. Badges. Sounds. Banners. All right. Selected. And this is the messages. This is the applications table. You would interact here. In up music. Off. Music is off because I don't use it. Night Owl. Off. That's my Twitter client. Notes. Badges. Sounds. Banners. So. And then you just... Stop interacting. Allow notifications. Allow notifications. Notes alert style. None. Radio button. Banners. Selected. Radio alerts. Radio button. Banners appear in the upper right corner and go away automatically. All right. So you get the idea. Finder. Audio hijack. Audio hi Resume recording. Folk. Finder. System preferences. System preferences. Notifications and... F All right. So... I'm going to show you a couple more things here in um, System Preferences, and then I guess we'll go and see if there's any questions. So, I don't know if I mentioned it. There's two different ways to go back um, in your System Preferences. You can do Command Left Arrow. I'm sorry. Command Left Bracket, which is what I'm going to do. And you can also do Command L, which shows all... Um, system all what does it say show all preferences show Notif all preferences i guess i use that one so preference preference it desktop it so i'm going to go back to keyboard keyboard button loading keyboard 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 selected tab one to five all right i've already showed you um how to uncheck and check that box for your function keys and there's a button in there to, to customize whether you want the function key to be a globe key or whatever the case may be so let's go to the next one text tab Two of five. Uh, this is text. 
Substitutions. BTS. Be there soon. Selected. So. Dictation tab. If you're signed into the same Apple ID and all that across the board, you know those little beat, you know, quick hit um, abbreviations you have, you can write and it'll populate for you. The, it, it, it syncs across your Mac. So you heard one of mine which said BTS, which means be there soon. I got another one that says IKR, which is I know right. And stuff like that. So that's that's where that comes in. Substitute checked. Correct spelling automatically. Checkbox. And that will do it globally. No matter what app you're in. Mail, messages, text edit pages, even on Safari. Um, I have it set collect, correct spelling automatically. There are a couple apps where I customize that. Like messages because I like to talk or spell stuff wrong on purpose when I'm talking to certain people. Just to, you know, be funny. But... Other than that, it's across the board. Checked. Capitalize words automatically. Checkbox. And that means if you're, if you hit the space bar twice, no, that's the period shortcut. But yeah, if you're at the beginning of a sentence, it will automatically capitalize the first word for you. Checked. Add period with double space. Checkbox. And I just said that one. So yeah, if you hit the space bar twice, it'll automatically add a period for you. You won't have to do it. I always do it just to force a habit because... When I was in school, we didn't have this kind of technology. Spelling. Automatic by language. Spelling. Pop-up button. All right. Automatic by language. Let's see what the other choices are. Menu check. Check mark. Auto. U.S. English. British English. Canadian English. Australian A Indian English. All right. We're not going to go through all the, Eng all the languages. So automatically by language mindset, even though Spanish is the, or I said Spanish, even though English is the only language that I speak. Automatic by language. Spelling. Checked. Use smart quotes and dashes. Checkbox. All right. That says that's pretty self-explanatory. Use smart quotes and dashes. That one's checked. I've never changed it. Don't know what it does. Don't even know where it inserts these smart quotes and dashes at. For double quotes. Open is left and close is right. Double quotation mark. Double quote. Pop up right, button. Okay, so it's giving you an option on where you how you want the double quotes to look. So for single quotes. Open is left and close is right. Single quotation mark. Single right. quote. Pop Same up button. Thing here. Got a choice. I'm not even going to look at the options because I'm leaving it alone. Add button. All right. And I guess you can add one of your own, a custom own one or whatever. Remove button. Keyboard battery level. <coughs> Image. 97%. All right. That's nice to tell me what my, my Bluetooth keyboard battery level is. Set up Bluetooth keyboard. Button. Help button. All right. And so that's the last option. Let's go back to the left. Toolbar. Keyboard. Keyboard. Text. Select shortcuts. Tab. Three of five. Input sources tab four dictation tab five of five. All right, so there's where you would do your you set up your dictation. I I have mine disabled, so I mean it's pretty. I'll go in here. It's pretty self-explanatory though. Selected. Use dictation wherever you can type text to start dictating. Use the shortcut or select to start dictation from the edit menu. Dictation. On radio button one of two. Off. Selected radio button now two that's it. two. Mine is off, so Sennheiser SC one by five USB menu button. And that's the headset or microphone that it would use if I did use dictation. Language, English, United States language. English Pop -up is button. my language. Shortcut. Press Control key twice. Shortcut. Pop up button. <clears throat> menu check mark. Press globe symbol with meridians twice. Press right command key twice. Press left command key twice. Press either command key twice. Customize ellipses. All right, so there you go. You have a, a variety of options on which key you can press for the shortcut. Again, mine is disabled, so I don't have to worry about that. Press control about dictation and privacy, but keyboard battery level. All right, and that's the end of that. About dictation and toolbar, key keyboard, text, shortcuts, tab, three if selected. Take a look at these shortcuts. I'll just give you an idea what the categories Input are. Input sources, tab, to, to change shortcuts categories, row two if eight. Category expose image mission control image selected right. mission control and shortcuts silver a222 image image silver a220 app to check shortcuts categories row three of eight silver a222 image keyboard image selected right. that's keyboard and short category screenshots image screenshots category services image services category spotlight image spotlight category one image so, app to change. You can go in there and uncheck and check the shortcuts that you want. I encourage you to take a look at those. Um, 
because there's a lot of shortcuts that I don't use that other people use. Like there's one that will take you automatically to the dock and a tab key. I don't use them, so I'm really not going to go extensively into them. So show all preferences. The last thing I'm going to show you that I don't think was available when I did the recording back in September is this um, particular thing. Now I'm going to show it to you, but I don't want you to use it unless you absolutely have to. And that is, we're going to go VOM. Menu bar, Apple, System Preferences. System Preferences. Edit. And you notice there's no file menu in here because you can't save and whatever. Let's go over to View. Let's go over to the View menu. So you go down, or VO down arrow. View. Back command, left bracket. Forward command, right bracket. I think these are commands I already showed you. Show all preferences, command L. Command L. Customize ellipses. You can customize. Check mark, organize by categories. I have mine organized by category, but you can also organize them by. Organize alphabetically. There you go. But you can organize them alphabetically if that's your forte. Search command F. And search command F. Accessibility. All right, and then it's going to list all of them. But the thing that I wanted to show you that Edit system preferences. I didn't wasn't able to show you before because it wasn't available yet, or because I was still in beta when I did the recording back in October when I was before this was available. Is you can go back to the system preferences menu and VO down arrow. About system preferences. Erase all content and settings ellipsis. Erase all content and settings. This is the first Mac OS that this has been available on. It's always been available on your phone and your iPad in settings general all the way to the bottom and whatever. But now instead of going into um, disk recovery by holding down the power button and on an M1 and holding down command R with a uh, Intel based Mac you don't have to do all that and go into disk recovery wipe the disk and all that you can come into system preferences and go to about erase all content and settings ellipsis services and what you would do is erase all content and settings ellipsis well let's just do it because I'll just say cancel because I don't remember what the process is but I think essentially all you got to do is verify your Apple ID and password. It'll ask you if you're sure twice and then you do it. But let's see. Erase all. Erase assistant. Erase assistant window. Secure. Edit text. Has keyboard focus. All right. It automatically has me in a password field. So let's look to the left and see what it wants. Password. Cliff Miller. Username. All right. It's asking for my computer password. Cliff Miller. Password. Secure edit text. And I'll type that in real quick. Cancel but OK default button. I'm gonna hit the OK button, but you could also hit enter. Window window continue button continue open time machine button. Your Mac was last backed up on December 19th, 2021. All right, that's I mean it might that might be true, but that drive's not even connected. You should back up your Mac using time machine before resetting it. Resetting your Mac will delete all media data and settings. All right, you heard what he said. It'll delete all media, data, and settings. Continue button. Open. T continue button. Scroll area. Continue. Continue. Scroll all settings, media, and data will be erased. The following items will also be removed. Let's see what those following items are. Scroll area. And you heard him. You said it's a scroll area. You are currently on a scroll area. Inside of a scroll area. To begin interacting with the contents of this scroll area, press Control Option Shift Down Arrow. All to right. stop interacting with this scroll area, press Control Option Shift Up Arrow. I knew what to do. I just did that for the uh, um, sake of the presentation. So let's interact and see what other items are going to be erased. In iCloud image, Apple ID, K Lift at SD Touch it image, Touch ID, all fingerprints used for a keyboard image, accessories. All Bluetooth accessories will be unpaired. Image. Find my and activation lock. Location sharing will be turned off. Location sharing will be turned off. All right, so all fingerprints, my cloud stuff, all Bluetooth devices will be unpaired. So that's good Added. to know. Conti continue button. Scroll all erase 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 all all settings scroll area. All settings system preferences. So I canceled that because I don't want to erase my Mac. So that is today's presentation. Like I said, a little Thank quick. You. <laughs> um, tidbit quick hits. Thanks for joining us. Tim Kilburn has joined us, so I'm going to ask him to unmute because I made him a co-host. I don't know why I gave him that <laughs> much privilege. But, uh, <laughs> um, but uh, no, I just want to uh, 
ask Tim to join in just in case there's something that I missed or add to any questions that might be asked. But one thing that I will add is um, when you're going through these settings, you definitely got to make sure that you delve into what you I couldn't go into detail for the lack of time that we have. But I mean, just for the sake of this class, Tim, because you did it last year, can you give us a little bit of a history lesson on where the Mac came from? I mean, I know the first one was launched back in 1984. And of yeah, course, we're here. His birthday was on Monday. Yep. I was just about to say, it just turned 40. So, I mean, I mean, we're what? 40 years later, or what is that, 38? I guess I can't do my math. <laughs> <laughs> or is that 42 years? Whatever it is. Anyways, tell us where the Mac has come from, especially from an accessibility standpoint, because I actually used a Mac back in two or 1987, but that was back when you had to unscrew the top and put a sound card in, patch a cord into a speaker, and, you know, it was nowhere it is today, but we got voiceover, correct me if I'm wrong, back in 2008, so oh, just, just give us a little bit of a, 2005, so yeah, just give us a little bit of a history lesson on where it's come from and where we're at today, I mean, especially coming from Snow Leopard, where we finally got Quick Nav and stuff like that on Lion Mountain Lion and all that. Yeah, like way back when, if I if I go go far back, um, back in the, the late 80s and 90s, you had to use a bolt-on kind of screen reader like like you do on in Windows, uh, where you had to put JAWS or that sort of thing on the side. So you had there was there was uh, something that was created by a, a group out of uh, Berkeley, University of Cal California, Berkeley, and it was called Outspoken. And that you you installed it and you used your numpad on the side and you navigated around and got to your menus all that sort of stuff and, and actually some of that numpad stuff has moved itself over into voiceover for people that were excited so that worked all the way through ios or not ios through mac os uh what were our numbers way back then four five six seven eight nine uh, all those, and then when it got into Mac OS 10, all of a sudden voice over was, well, outspoken would not work and voiceover was not invented yet. Um, but Apple had ideas and it just took them uh, from 10.0, 10 10.1, 10 10.2 and 10.3, there was no such thing as voiceover, but they introduced it in 10.4 Tiger. It was pretty basic at the time, but it was, um it, it, it was an amazing thing to to have happen because then it just made it so that the mac opened up um now like you say once we got past leopard and then into snow leopard things started improving a lot some people may say there wasn't very many improvements uh since then but there, there's so many things that just happened in the background that people don't even realize have changed. There's been a lot of things added that make it easier for the transition from Windows to a Mac in the sense that like there's the, the cursor movement. You can make it seem more like a Windows computer than Mac. You can make uh, there's things that people are used to using, like your single letter navigation and things like that that have all been added. Um, so it's just a, a, a gradual thing that as time if i'm not been, mistaken that wasn't even added until line or mountain line if i'm not mistaken because i yeah. started on snow leopard and i was coming i mean like i mentioned before you came on <laughs> the this kind of training was not available 10 12 years ago you had to yeah. you had to you know teach yourself or not get taught at all so yeah and, and i'll some... just add too that you know in leopard because i actually started on leopard and uh Yes, you know, voiceover in Leopard was lacking some of the more advanced screen reader functionality like, you know, verbosity control and, you know, some of that stuff, which, of course, got the JAWS users up in arms. I never really felt like it was necessary, but, uh, you know, that was my was going to be my point. Even in Leopard, voiceover was very functional, very usable. And the vast majority, I would say, of the of the Apple apps on the Mac were accessible or at least had a degree of accessibility you know yeah. they weren't you know pages for example was nothing like it is now but it also wasn't horrible you know if you had a windows pc and you didn't use word you tried to install 
what was it back at the time? Lotus Smart Suite or Corel Word Perfect? Well, you know, Corel was half accessible. Lotus was maybe, a, you know, 10%. So, I mean, you really didn't have much to go on. You know, Pages was better than that, even back in, in Leopard. So it was a it was a, a very good experience from uh, pretty much the beginning. I never used it in Tiger, but, you know, beyond that. Right, mm -hmm. and it really cracks me up, though, when people say Apple's not caring about accessibility or they are all about themselves correct me if i'm wrong but up until the m1s were made um they had all these third-party programs like the infusion and parallels and boot camp that allowed people to put windows on the mac because they wanted to keep the consumer enticed to use their mac but use their windows since that was the quote-unquote corporate or work environment that people wanted to work with yeah, though that 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 was that was that way, and and even now, like there are, like, um, VM Fusion and stuff still, um, is trying to make Windows work right. There's just a bit of a fight going on between the Windows world, the Windows uh, Microsoft OS version of things, and trying to make it fit in there because the M1 is so such a different architecture in a lot of ways that it may it's not as, uh. It's not the same as integrating an Intel chip into it that the Intel chip is used to using Windows, right? So it just it takes a bit more work, and so first, it, it's not a, as smooth a transition. It's just like um, it took a while for them to actually make Boot Camp because uh, initially Apple used to do their own chips way back when as well. Before they moved to Intel, they did their own chips, and you couldn't use Boot Camp. That, that was just something they did along the way. Must have been, uh, I don't know, maybe 2008 or nine, somewhere in there. I can't remember. I've never bothered with it myself. So, Yeah, I, I, I used to, but I mean, it's probably been 2015 or 16 since the last time I loaded a VM on my on my uh, Mac and now I have an M1 so it's not even possible I made the comparison um, about a week or so ago Matt on the list do you want steak or bologna because I don't know about you but I want steak and putting <laughs> windows <laughs> putting windows on a Mac is to me that's just that's just corrupting the machine to me I mean that's my <laughs> preference though but I mean there is a as far as I'm concerned at least Tim you you know and Cliff you you would be more qualified to really speak to this for me there is a massive difference between using my 20 what was it 2019 intel based 27 inch imac which was not the base model either uh between using that and and using what the, you know the m1 24 inch IMAC. i mean there's a huge difference in oh, yeah. performance if nothing else oh for sure for sure we've got yep. i i put in 50 of those 24 inch um, IMAX in our in our schools here, and just the especially for the um, photography media students, it's just amazing the difference that it uses when they're doing like stuff like Adobe Premiere, or doing video editing and that kind of thing. It's the performance is outstanding. Um, touch on the spyware, malware, security um, features or lack, not lack thereof, but need for on the Mac. Yeah. Because, I mean, I know I've owned a Mac for 12 years. I've never owned anything close to Windows, nothing to scan my computer with because I've just been yeah. told that it's better and I've never had a virus. So, Yeah. Now, there, there I will say you'll never get one because if you do some things that are, like if you do things that are not, um, security conscious, I guess I'll say. Like if, if somebody sends you something and you go to, and you click on the link and you put in your, log in your Google credentials into it and all of a sudden it, there, there are things, or if it asks for your, somebody sends you something and it wants to install and asks you to put in your computer password and you actually do, then you can, there are some viruses or and things out there that can, infect you but overall if you do the the basic things of making sure that you don't enter passwords when you shouldn't that don't e open emails that you don't recognize the, the where who it came from be careful of the links you click on um watch out for pop-ups and things like that and don't just click on them 
I would say 98% of the time, you won't have anything to worry about. There's so much security built in that, you know, in the old days, you used to hear people say that their Windows computer was just wiped. Like somebody would type in, in to, to a, a DOS command to clear their C drive. You can't do that on a Mac. It won't let you. It won't let you erase the whole thing. It's just not possible. So there's those and, kinds you of know, the, the other thing going along with that, which I always stress to people, is that that the Mac OS, you know, Apple. Now it is it is not, and I can say this because Apple themselves have said it in these ongoing, uh, you know, disputes with the government and disputes with companies like Epic and Spotify and whatever. You know, the Mac is not as secure as iOS in a in a in a manner of how easy it is to make those mistakes because it's a lot easier. It, it's as secure in the, in the architecture, but in it, your ability to mess it up, <laughs> the Mac is easier because you can install third-party apps. You know, yeah, I mean, that, for that a lack be, of a better term, it's just bottom line, just human common sense, right? That's yeah. right. And that's what it comes down to. But what people don't realize is even though Apple doesn't advertise this, the Mac is every day, updating its security settings. It's scanning for security threats that are known. Apple updates it with new ones that it may not have known yesterday. And if it finds them, it takes care of them. And, and that's something they don't you know, make a big deal of. And then if there are security issues that are found, they're quick to fix them. And believe me, if they're not, the media pounces all over it, which I don't <laughs> think, you know, and, and I got to say, I, I think that's a mistake. I'm not anti-free press, but I'm anti-giving the hackers a playbook which is what happens when <laughs> when they publish these articles and say you can reproduce this with these 10 steps you know i think that's stupid but hey that's just me you know but but i mean apple is they're really really good about fixing that stuff about addressing it there was a uh, a recently discovered safari bug in the webkit framework on mac os and ios that theoretically theoretically if if it were in the right hands could allow somebody with malicious intent to figure out every website you have visited in the past. And if the coding is right on that website, like it is on Google, they could even potentially, theoretically, figure out your identity. Well, that was discovered a little bit ago, and Apple's already fixed it. We ought to be getting iOS 15.3 uh, and Mac OS, whatever you're, it is. You're about an hour late. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we did get it. It did drop. Yes. Okay, yep. well, there you go. So you update, <laughs> you update and you're good. You know, and, and that brings so, me to my. That brings me to my 2008, next. you know. Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> what, what, what's? Oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> you're right. Hey, but was, that brings me to my next. With my daughter, what can I say? <laughs> I was just gonna say that brings me to my next point because some people <laughs> want this Windows mentality where they want to shut their computer down when they're not using it. That that prevents Apple from making back end updates, security updates, because you're computer does stuff your mac does stuff in the background and under the hood that you don't know that it's doing when it's idle when it's sleep you know when it's connected to the internet it's not a bad thing it's a good thing because they're helping you as the customer protect yourself by you leaving your computer on. and plus the fact that any computer that was 2018 or above and it might even go further back than that i mean when you close the lid on a macbook pro you're essentially it's just as good as turning it off anyway so i mean um, now, just to, to clarify that, those th those various things, that periodic things that run through the night in, or at 2 o'clock in the morning, those will, if your laptop is closed, most of those will run in the morning when you first open it up anyway. Um, but it, it's you will find that your computer operates much more efficiently if you let these things happen at night, because then what, what it's doing is those things happen when you're not using the computer, they, it makes it more efficient and makes it more, um, it, it just cleans things up. So it's things like you used to hear things called defrags, things like that, those sorts of things that clean up your space on the drive to make it run as efficiently as possible or little parts of the Mac OS and that those all happen at two or three o'clock in the morning and the yep. computer just does it. Uh, it will do it in the morning. So, Basically, if you have an yeah. iMac, 
you don't need to shut it off. Restart it once a month if you ha- if you feel like you need something. But I've got computers here that have been running for six, eight months and never turned off. I was about off. to say, yeah. I've had my M1 since last May, and I think I've only restarted it twice. And one of the times is when I did a clean install. So, yeah. <laughs> so I mean, for, for the record, I mean, you'll see these apps that they'll say it's made for the Mac, like C Cleaner. Um, what's the what's the popular one? Clean my Mac and yeah, Onyx yeah. and some other ones. I don't use none of those, and no, I've never I don't had any issues. <laughs> I'm not gonna say no. like Tim that you'll never encounter something, but just use common sense. I mean, it's not being mean. It's just you know practical use. You want to keep your machine safe. So remember last year you used to, I think it was Mission Control. Is that the one that it makes a whoosh sound when you yep. bump into it automatically? Well, there's yep. a couple. The, the launch pad does and mission control does. I, oh. Don't ask me about those because I disable them. So That's what I was going to ask you. How do you do that? How do you disable them? Because I hate those. Is um, that really hard? System preferences, keyboard, shortcuts, interact with each table. One's going to say mission control. The launch pad's one that you're not going to be able to disable in there. You're just going to have to leave that key alone. But mission control is the ones that you can uncheck. Now, be careful when you go on there because there's one particular one that I use that I disabled by accident and I had to go back in there and find it. So make sure you know what you're disabling. Somebody sent me a tip for people who actually watch or listen to the YouTube videos on their Mac. They said that once you go to the video or audio, I mean, because it's actually audio with a logo and some text that says my email address and uh, website. But anyway, once you're listening to the video, they said J will rewind, K will play and pause, and L will fast forward. Now, this is on your Mac. I don't know how you do it on your phone, but this is a Mac class, so that's where you should be listening to it anyway. But no, J will rewind, K will play and pause, and L will fast forward. And that's after the video is already playing. So, thanks to Gary who sent me that little tip, and he asked me to tell the class about it. So, if you want to listen to the YouTube recordings on your Mac, that will give you a little more control over how fast and you know you put play and pause it or whatever and again those uh those buttons if you are doing it on the phone are just right on the screen and you can also there's a a, a scrub bar that you can scrub through the video to go further back instead of having to rewind by you know whatever it is 10 or 15 second uh increments you can use the uh, scrub bar to go further back or forward it says track position if i don't get any emails or no feedback on what you want to learn what you want to know these sessions are going to be a lot shorter because i've had to look into i had to had to torture myself and read matt's outline from last year to figure out what else i was going to come up with (laughs) because i'm getting no email no feedback so i mean mail's going to be next and then possibly um safari but after that you know if there's no feedback this class is going to end a lot sooner than you know because you'll, you'll have the basics you'll you'll have what you need to explore each app in patterns i mean i can show you the calendar i can show you a few things in context we've already been over messages in the finder so i mean if, if i don't get no emails we can't help you my question is and actually this is a confirmation um in the in the help menus which you pointed out and uh, under navigation one of the commands uh, that I, I've never been able to get to work to work in text edit is the VO page up and page down, but it works perfectly fine in pages. Uh, can I assume that that's just the way it is, that, that um, the, the command is not designed to work in text edit? Well, text just, edit is a little more simple, it's simple, for lack of a better term. It's right. not it's, gonna it's, let you go by page Okay, um, I just wanted to be sure that that was the case, that I wasn't Yeah, because I, I know somebody who has fine. a long document, and they've been trying to, <laughs> yeah. get, you know, go to different pages because it's, like, really long. But, yeah, pages yeah. doesn't allow that. I mean, the okay. best thing I, I can suggest sure. for, for text edit is if you know what you're looking for, to just search for the just text, and it'll take you to that, yep, and go to that text. Can I ask, while you're on that, on the sub, just one quick question. I use the find and text edit all the time, command F, and then I type in text, and right. it says next or previous but it doesn't work that way in pages <laughs> it, it it just seems to be a different process when i'm in pages when i do the command f matt that's um, your area <laughs> okay sorry about that say that again i apologize he's say saying that, that the, the the find function in text edit doesn't work the same way in pages 
uh, I'll give you an example. I have a, let's say I have a large text document with whatever I have in it and I want to find a particular word. So I do command F and I type it in and it says previous next and then it says done. And that works perfectly, I do it all the time. But when I go into pages and I do command F, I can type in text and I can, it, it goes to previous or next, but it, I never get to done. And so it, my conclusion is pages work slightly differently when you do a find, if you're looking for a string of text. It, well, that yeah. was one of the, and that, that had to do with one of the reasons I was asking whether it was you know, <clears throat> significantly advantageous to consider switching over from Gmail to iCloud, so, you know, because of some of the hiccups and, and the hoops you have to jump through. Well, that's gonna be that's gonna come down to personal preference. Um, like right, like right. Matt said, we both have Gmail accounts because we use YouTube and you know some other things. But I mean, I don't use their cloud service. Yeah. I don't use their Docs or their Google Sheets. But you know what you essentially could do if you're even thinking about it is get your iCloud created. And if that's if Gmail is your um, Apple ID right now, I would recommend going into your iCloud settings and setting up your iCloud that way. That way your Gmail iCloud is associated with your iCloud and they're one and the same. Because if you do it the opposite direction where you just create an iCloud and then you try to switch your I Apple ID, it's not going to let you do it or your purchases are not going to come over or you're going to have to set up family sharing to do so. So the best right. way to do it if your Gmail is your Apple ID is to go into iCloud your name and set up iCloud email there it's going to ask you it's going to tell you it's not activated do you want to set it up you'll say yes and then it'll automatically associate itself with your gmail apple id so, and what you'll end up with is you'll technically end up with both you'll have you know whatever at gmail.com is still going to be your apple id but then your whatever at iCloud.com is also going to work. And I think in most cases, you can use them interchangeably, right, Cliff? Yeah, yeah. You can sign yeah. in with the iCloud one. You don't even have to use the Gmail. It'll show up, but you can still use that the iCloud or Gmail with the same password. Right, right. Okay. Well, I'm like you, Cliff. I started using the Mac in 2010. And so I got a lot of contacts, and so I was just wondering – how momentous it would be to have to try to change. Well, from Gmail are, are, are your are are your uh, contacts in Gmail? Yeah, because the easy thing to do would just be to sign into your Gmail account on your Mac. So make sure contacts is selected. Go uh -huh. into contacts. Select interact with the table of your Gmail contacts. Copy them all, then go up to your iCloud and then paste them there. And that will okay. sync up to your iCloud. Okay. It's a lot easier. But then he's going to want to turn. Oh, sorry, Cliff. What was that? No, I, oh, but yeah, you're right. Then, you, then you're going to want to turn Gmail I, contacts off because you'll have the ones from your uh, Otherwise, Gmail account. you'll have duplicates, right? Right. right. Okay. And then you'll run into that issue that we have with a lot of our students and customers where it, it'll show up on one device but not the other because the settings aren't the same. So. My question is a systemic one. I wondered if the why is it necessary to have both the rotor and the um, interactive? Is this a matter of one is used more with, let's say, the trackpad or the um, you know the quick nav, and the other is used more with the keyboard? It seems like overkill, even though they're a little different. Well, can you, you're, it, you're you're mixing oranges and apples. Yeah, I, I think they're actually very different. That's what I was going to say. Can you clarify what you mean? Because the rotor and interaction are two very, they're not even used for the same thing. Um, so maybe I'm misunderstanding your question. Um, well, I, you know, because in in the rotor, you're making choices about what you want to show up. And on your, you know, your in a way it's kind of like a preference and interaction. I understand it's like a room, you go into the room and there's your choices. I know they're different, but I just wondered whether it related to the fact that you can make different choices based on, you know, whether what part well, of the it, system, it, system you're using, the trackpad, the, 
No, in, interaction is based upon what is on the screen right now. You interact with a toolbar, you interact with web area, you interact with an edit field. That's interaction. So it has to do with actually reading what's on the screen and interacting with it and working with it. The rotor is a virtual control which has different choices that can be anything from different ways to navigate, like by heading, by link, or by, you know, uh, button or something, form control, or it could be, you know, your voiceover settings, at least in iOS, your voiceover settings can be in the rotor. I assume they can on the Mac. I'd have to ask Cliff or Tim. Um, and, you know, there could be languages in the no, rotor. No, it's not so necessary for it to be in the rotor because you can get to it by VOV, so... Whoops, what was that, Cliff? Sorry. It's it's not necessary for voiceover settings to be in the rotor because you can get to it quickly by the VO keys and the literal Right, keys right, right. Keys. But I'm just saying the rotor has a whole different set of purposes. The rotor is is context sensitive depending on what's on the screen, but it's not – this interaction is, is not even – you know, they're, they're two very different purposes. So it's not right. – whether you use the trackpad, the keyboard, or both – you're going to have to both use, you're, you're definitely going to have to interact at times and you'll probably be using the rotor on, you know, even with the keyboard, you sometimes use the rotor maybe without realizing it just because you're not doing a rotor gesture. You're, you're still using it at any, um, you know, it, yeah. I mean, it, so yeah, two very, very different things. I don't, I get the, you know, I get the implication. I mean, I know that interaction is immediate, you know, that if, you you interact, for example, with a table because that's what's right there and it's dealing with your immediate thing, you know, that you've got there in front of you. But I guess, you know, I've used iOS for a long time, so I guess I'm kind of well, coming okay. from, so then if from you the iOS, iOS angle and, it, and I'm like, okay, so what, what's so, some of so the difference? The thing about iOS, the thing about iOS is that iOS is primarily now of course there are exceptions to this especially for ipad users but the ios is primarily a full screen interface whatever app you open that app is on the screen and you are directly obviously as you know you are directly touching the screen uh and you know you swipe to the next element you double tap on that element simple as that Mac OS is a, a much different animal in that it has everything in Windows. You can have, you know, five different windows opened up and, and then each of those may have, you know, a toolbar in that window and, a, a, you know, a web area or a content area and, a, you know, a bunch of edit fields and all those things. And so where iOS doesn't, Mac OS makes you interact with those. You only are getting a bird's eye view uh, an upper level view if you don't interact. So you have to interact because of the way that it's laid out. Now, interestingly, Apple has added an option to iOS that voiceover users can choose to work with it like you work with a Mac. So it, it's called, what's it called, guys? Group, group. Flat items. versus, flat, flat versus, versus group. Thank you. Yeah, that's it. Flat versus group. I, I personally can't, you know, it's just personal preference. I, I personally can't figure out why any iOS user would want to switch to to group unless they are just such a confident and competent Mac user and iOS is new to them and they want to kind of recreate that experience. I otherwise can't figure out any logical reason why, you know, why you'd want to do that. But if you do turn that on, it, it supposedly does. I, I don't even remember if I tested it, to be honest with you, because I looked at it and thought, boy, I don't want to do that. But but I, you know, it, it allegedly will make it the same thing. Like you'll run into, you know, let's say you're in pages, you'll run into the the toolbar, which has in it on iPhone. I'm talking now iPhone or iPad, which has in it, you know, uh, what is it? Uh, view options, format, insert, more, collaborate. You know, and suddenly you won't be able to see that except it'll say toolbar and you have to do a two finger swipe to the right to interact with it. So you can actually make iOS like that now, but it isn't it wasn't primarily designed to be that way. And uh, so it's just that the Mac OS is grouping these items and allowing you to see, oh, OK, here's a toolbar. Here's a sidebar. Here's a web area. And here's an edit field. Which one do I want? Now I'm going to interact with it. You know, so, yeah, it's a totally different thing from the rotor. I love 
the iPad, I, I think the Mac is the best traditional computer out there, but there's just, you know, things about the iPad. And I'm able to give some of those and, and you know, put them into words when we talk about certain aspects of it. But I always feel like there's more that I can't express to people that you almost have to use it to figure out. And I think we've just hit the nail on the head of what it is, Tim, which is that that is the difference between directly interacting with the screen of the device versus doing it the way that you have to do it on a Mac or for on any computer for that matter. You know, if as a, at least as the blind user, you know, yes. with the mouse, if you can see, maybe it's a little bit different, but I mean, if I want to go to um, a website on Safari, I know from experience because, you know, God given plus, you know, I've been doing this for however many years now, I know from experience exactly where that Safari icon is. And I can tap nine times out of 10, I'll land right on the correct icon. Once in a while, I'll be, you know, one or two away and I just swipe. Then when I'm in Safari, I know exactly where the address bar is so that within one or two taps, I can tap on it and be right on the address bar. That isn't the case in Mac OS. And I'm not saying Mac OS is bad. It's, it's the greatest desktop operating system in existence, but it is different. So that's, that's yeah. an interesting, yeah. And what you do though, how you get around those kinds of things is that's when you start using things like Command L to get to the exactly. address bar. Exactly, so that's when you have to. Or you yep. use the item chooser to get yep. to where you need to go to make that faster so you don't have to do things. Now, <laughs> sorry, one other thing that we can add with respect to your flat versus grouping on an iPad or an, I, uh, or an iPhone. Um, I think the, the addition of that, although it does work with your actual swipe gestures and everything, I think it's more set for the people, like you said, that are coming from the Mac that are key or that are using the keyboard on on, on their iPad. So that when you have an iPad and you're using keyboard navigation, instead of having to go element by element, when, once you start grouping those together, it makes it a faster navigation right, process. Right, right. Um, I want to quickly move back to that other question about using find in pages because I did some testing here and it actually works beautifully for me. I don't know if it's because I have my keyboard set up differently or whatever, but if I do a command F in a, in a, in a pages document, and let's say I want to find the word Matt in that document, as soon as I finish typing the word Matt, it'll actually... Um, tell me where it is in it, where it found the first one or the, that one. And I can, if that's the one I want, I just close the window and my cursor will actually be there. Close the find window or I can hit the previous or next and it'll tell me the next instance of that or a previous instance of that. And then when I, when it's the one I want, cause it kind of reads part of that line, then I just push command W to close the, the find window and my cursor sitting right there. And for the person who asked that question, that was the, the part of the question that they were unsure of was where that done button is. So Tim just answered it for you. You don't need the done button. You just do command W, which of course is the, is the close current window command. And that will close the find window and get you back to your document. Exactly. Yep. I'm playing with uh, like switching back and forth between column view and list view and finder. And there are things I really like about both. So I'm going to ask Tim, are you a list view guy or a column view guy, or do you do both? I'm primarily a list view guy. Yeah. And yeah. that's, that's, um, that's an age thing. It's because okay. I started on late uh, on column or on list view and I opened my windows and I'm just used to doing it that way. Yeah. Yeah. A column view is, is great. And it's, it's a tree kind of thing, but it sometimes, what I find with some people, um, when you when you get in there, you, you got to be careful because sometimes you leave a tree open mm -hmm. and you'll go to, like I do a lot of typing the first couple letters of it to, to get to what I want to get to, right? Yes. And if one of those triangles is open, then it will actually say, I'm inside here. And you don't get to the parent, you get to something from inside and it just messes with me. It's yeah. And that's just a, a preference of mine. I... I I get used to it. I've had you to make good some to changes. Tim and Matt, because Cliff only uses list view. So. And, and that's probably what where I'm going to land is list view. It's been fun playing with both, but that's probably yeah. where I'm. And, going. And, and some people and like column view because like they. It. I'm sorry, Tim, but some people like column view because they say that you don't have to open a folder to paste something into it. But I mean, what if you mm -hmm. paste it into a folder that's open that you don't know is open, like Tim just mentioned? Right. Right. 
Yeah. I mean, voiceover is a little less verbose in column view, but I, if you mess with files a lot and you kind of, it's nice in list view. I love how voiceover will automatically tell you a file size if you let it finish its thing. All right. Well, as you guys know, Monday is the YouTube recording. It's going to be on mail. We're getting into the meat and potatoes. I know people have been waiting on this one, so I'm going to make sure I take my time with it and make sure I give you all the different aspects, even though I don't use um, mail without quick nav. I'll do it just for this demonstration. But other than that, back here next Wednesday at 1 Central, and you know your time zone, so you know what time to show up. If you're on the calendar, then it should show up. If not, I know there's some people that's had a problem subscribing to the calendar, so I will send out a reminder the day before. Other than that, thanks everybody for joining us, and uh, you have a good weekend. Thanks for joining us, Tim. Uh, you're welcome. Thanks for joining More With The Mac Interactive. If you didn't get your questions answered, or you have another concern, email support at ttjtech.net. I'm Trainer Cliff. Thanks for joining us.